Hello, I'm Jason Skill. This is Painting with Skill Lesson 20. What we're going to do in Lesson 20 is look at the idea of layering your work. What a lot of the, uh, the battle with students when they're painting really for, for themselves is that they have a tendency to just kind of plow on, they'll, they'll paint, they'll do wet and wet, and then they kind of don't really wait for it to dry enough to then do some wet on dry on top. So we'll kind of look at that here, that, that the sort of discipline of painting and leaving and painting and leaving and building it one on top of another. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to do some wet and wet, a bit of sky and a hint of kind of wet land uh, or water below. Uh, and do a little bit of uh, blotting out. So we'll start off with wetting. So I'm just taking the clean water, taking the excess off, and I'm going to work systematically from the top of the page to the bottom, just clipping the bottom edge of each stroke until I get to the bottom of the page. I might look at it, put my head on the side, make sure there's no areas that are um, drying uh, or I've missed. Now, because I'm working from uh, the top to the bottom on an angle, it's usually a good idea to go back to the top because gravity will push the excess water down the page just to basically re-wet that first uh, third of the picture, otherwise you find that bit dries out normally a little bit quicker than everywhere else. I'm then going to take a little bit of blue. Let's take a little bit of cobalt blue this time. Nice warm blue, cobalt blue. And I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, blue in a largish cloud shape following our stock sky idea so that we're doing the big cloud then the smaller cloud then the smaller clouds so let's do the same kind of thing there's also a little bit left of this um, sepia that was uh, previously mixed in the, the last demonstration so it's, it's made a kind of an interesting slightly dirty color so I'll work with that sometimes if you have a bit of an accident happen then you know maybe go go with it so the bottom of this cloud shape I'm gonna make that a little bit darker sometimes the bottom of cloud is a bit darker than it is at the top just the shadow that's created and then let's touch a little bit more water in the brush I'm gonna come down a bit so I'm knocking back from that first shape and I'm putting in my next cloud shape and then I'll put in the third cloud shape to follow the idea that we've done in the, the previous videos. This bit looks a bit empty so I'm just going to put in two or three tiny little clouds on the same kind of lines. Maybe we'll add a little bit more of that sepia in, maybe make it a bit darker at the bottoms of some of these cloud shapes. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of this blue and I'm just going to, while the paper is wet, I'm just going to come down. It's beginning to dry actually because of the the heat under these lights. But I'm just going to make that come down a little bit further so that we've got a little bit of colour down here rather than it just be white paper. Now I'm taking some kitchen roll. I'm looking back at what I've done. I'm maybe ripping a sheet in half because it's a bit big. I'm crunching up the paper. And I'm going back into these shapes. I'm just going to tidy up the spaces. I quite like the bit where it's round down here, but that's not so interesting. So let's just blot a little bit of that off. Above, I'm going to blot out a little bit of that so that becomes lighter above the darker section of the cloud. Maybe one or two little bits inside it. Still want to keep the shape. Maybe as if the sort of this, think of this as the white cloud moving in. Maybe I'll cut into that shape. A little bit more there. Into here, I'll, I kind of want to make a more. Um, turbulent looking shape of white cloud that's that's here. I even might want to do so. Oh, I feel like I'm almost rolling. We're just, just lightly touching. So it's just picking tiny bits out. And this one, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that so I make a bit more of a sausage. So I'm exploring that sausages idea. Again, just twisting that end and then maybe just pulling a few little marks out through there to make that shape look a little bit more complicated. And Sometimes the art is in the sort of touching and fiddling in this till you just get more what you want. Again, as I explained in the previous video, you, what you, you don't want to do is just keep fiddling and keep lifting and lifting. So you've got to make a decision. You think, yeah, that, that's the shape I want, and then leave it alone. Now, this is the hard bit. People often say, so when do you know when to stop? Well, experience will tell you when to stop, but the other thing to tell you when to stop is yourself saying stop. You know, you're, you're painting the picture, you get so far. If you feel like you don't know what you're doing, but you're just making marks still, you're just fiddling on with it, stop. Right? Just let it dry. Uh, and then you're going to put some other paint over the top of it. 
again, instead of just carrying on, plowing down the picture or putting stuff on top where it might back bloom, it might make uh, strange effects that you didn't plan on, then basically just leave it alone. Stop. So what I'm going to do now is just let that dry. And we'll come back to that when that's dried off. Okay, I think it's dry now. Now, how do you test whether it's dry? Well, one thing, obviously, is to leave it for a long period of time, 20 minutes, half an hour. Uh, depending on the heat of the room, then you'll find that it's going to you know, dry quickly or it might, it might take quite a long time to dry. Um, for the slightly more impatient amongst you, what you want to do is to test whether it's dry enough is to use the backs of your fingers so that you just touch the backs of your fingers on the paper. And if it still feels damp, then you don't basically touch it. You just let it dry solid. This is now dry enough to work on top. What I'm going to do first is set out a uh, it's kind of a, a plan shape, I think, just to make life simple if you were kind of copying this or, or going with this as a demonstration. Then all I would do is think about um, some of the shapes where we did sideways blocking. So I'm putting the paint on now and I'm just making some little sideways marks. I'm going to make some kind of castle shape here and then I'm going to come up and I'm thinking now as we have done one of the previous videos where you're you're making a bar of land that comes out you keep the bottom edge flat and then I'm just gonna add that was raw sienna I'm just gonna add a little bit of raw umber into this and what you might do sometimes is you make the shape and before it dries you think, hmm, can I actually just put maybe a little bit of extra colour into it? So this is, in a sense, this is like wetting wet in the shape itself as you go. Right. So I'm just thinking in terms of kind of a sandy layer on top of which I'll add something else. I'm not trying to finish the castle and dunes, whatever, at the moment. This is just your first kind of layer at it. And I'm just going to continue down with the same kind of wash idea. So I'm coming across now again with another kind of um, upside down knife shape. There we are. Making that. So this is now my sand coming towards me. Now, um, well, while I'm doing that, I might just make that a tiny bit darker. Going back, wetting wet. Now, I want to do that. If you're, if you're, um, if the paint is still quite damp, you can probably touch into it without any real difficulty. It's only when you've made um, quite a lot of paint and it's wet on the surface and then you're it's beginning to dry and then you're adding further paint into it that it has a tendency to, to back bloom and we'll talk about back blooms in a minute I'll, I'll do a little bit of demonstration of back blooming and, and why that happens i'm going to come further down i'm going a little bit further across so, you know, so ahead of me now i'm just going to do like a little spit of sort of rock there which i'm going to paint on top of again so instead of thinking like oh, i'm getting to the end of this picture now i'm just doing this as a layer so let's just have some of this pop out as a bit of a rocky outcrop and then we'll come back in again notice how every time I'm still thinking in this kind of horizontal basis to build this just to make life easy for myself and now I'm going to come forward a little bit from there now I'm not going to get much sense of the the picture moving towards me uh, to not you know unless I begin to add a little bit more depth of tone so I'm just going to add a little bit more of the raw uh, umber into this just so it appears a little bit more deep as it's moving forward and maybe if I make it a tiny bit more orange that would also help so I just take a little bit little bit of the burnt sienna there we are there's the burnt sienna a bit of those two together now the orange is a warm color so that slowly move towards us now I'm sort of running out of tonal value a little bit so I need to perhaps beef up a bit more of both of these paints a little bit thicker I also make it want to make it a little bit wet. So I'm just going to add maybe a tiny touch of the blue into that. So let's go back to that blue. I'm going to add a little bit of the cobalt blue into that. So now it looks kind of wet. It looks a little bit darker. And I'm going to make that come right the way forward here. So if you notice, I'm still working systematically down the page. Now, even with those two... Uh, operations they're wet and wet lifting out with the kitchen roll 
and then this slow working forward of kind of a, a graded altered uh, wash I've, I've achieved a great deal already it looks really quite uh, structured the sky looks like it has a, a plan has a structure to it the land now has a plan a structure to it and I can move into the, the water if I don't touch this land area now this is one of those things where impatience will drive you to now paint the water well really it probably be better if you just waited again till that's dried so you don't touch it with your hand as you're trying to do the marks in the water so again what am I gonna do I'm gonna stop I'm gonna let that dry I'm gonna have a think for a bit and then I'll come back to the next stage <laughs> 